Wow, this one's a weird one. Today we're checking out the B-Link EQ12 Pro, the beefed up brother to the EQ12, who got there by using too many steroids. But that's okay, now his balls have shrunk to almond size, and the EQ12 has the last laugh. Oh. Should have stuck to those protein shakes. Anyway, the EQ12 Pro features the Intel Core i3 N305, which is an 8-core, eight 8-thread eight CPU with Intel UHD graphics. I bought this mini PC for 350 US dollars. For that, you get 16 gigabytes of DDR5 and a 500 gigabyte NVMe drive. In the box is the usual B-Link accessory kit, power supply, dual HDMI cords, manual, and monitor mount. Not much has changed with the plastic box itself, unless you classify a different color of the EQ letters as a change. It's pretty much identical. Decent plastic quality and looks okay. The ports on the Pro also match the EQ12, dual USB 3, audio jack and power button on the front, USB-C with display out, USB 3 again, dual 2.5 gigabit LAN and dual HDMI 2.0. Taking it apart is the same deal as the EQ12, opening it up is easy with 4 exposed screws and then pull on the rubber. <laughs> you can plug in a 2.5 inch drive here for extra storage or dig deeper with a few more screws. All the Lake N CPUs support single channel memory, so there's just one stick of DDR5 and next to that is the AZW NVMe drive. An M.2 Intel Wi-Fi 6 card is under that, just like the EQ12. Windows 11 Pro is a poison of choice included with this mini PC. Ubuntu did mostly work off my USB drive, except for Wi-Fi. Once I started benchmarking the N305, I realized there's a problem. At 350 US dollars, I don't consider it a budget mini PC. So comparing it against 200 dollars-ish boxes, well, makes it look a lot better than it is. But comparing it with mid-range and up is, um, why don't I just show you? For the first time ever, we're seeing how the EQ Tour Pro compares in the budget segment and the mid and high end as well. How exciting! In single core, the N305 beats the N100 Mini by 10%. Hmm, well, at least it's at the top of the pack. Let's check the non-budget minis and, oh, it's in last place. It even gets thrashed by the Minis Forum UM560. Oh, and thanks to Dazza for the updated UM560 Cinebench 23 benchmarks. Okay, now in the budget multi-core benchmark, the EQ Tour Pro smashes the competition by 48%, so double the cores, double the, I mean, almost 50% extra performance. Okay, cool. Let's have a look at the mid-range. Oh, last place again. Even last year's i3 Nuktor Pro beats it, and I definitely didn't recommend that one. Back to the budget minis for some video encoding. Look at that, first place again. I'm shocked, shocked. Well, not that shocked. A decent 30% improvement. But against the mid-range, well, it gets an E for effort. Graphics is something I'm curious about with the N305, and there's a nice big upgrade compared to the budget minis. 57% over the N100 in DX11, and in DX12, it jumps to 60%. Let's check the other chart, and it's in last place. And last place, cool. The included NVMe drive runs at X1 Gen 3 speed due to a lack of PCIe lanes. So it's a bit faster than SATA, but far off a Gen 3 X4 slot. For a budget mini PC, I'd say that's perfectly fine, but this one isn't budget, and other minis at this price will have full Gen 3 bandwidth. The older Lake N chips have AV1 video hardware decoding, and like all the other CPUs, even the N95, they all handle 4K60 playback no problem. The added power of the Intel N305 should make for a decent esports box, and mostly, it's pretty good. In League of Legends, it keeps above 100 FPS easily. Valorant is now 70 FPS and above most of the time, which is a nice improvement over the N100. For Dota 2, you're looking at around 60 to 70 FPS. Not a major improvement here. CSGO performs well now, but it can still dip into the 70s. Still, it's not good enough for 1080p. Now, let's throw emulation at it. At 720p, Gran Turismo 4 runs full speed. Finally, we pass this hurdle. 
but if we up that to 1080p, that's no longer the case. Still, you should be able to play most of the PS2 library at 1080p. GameCube and Wii emulation is up next. Need for Speed Most Wanted is close to full speed, but not there yet. Mario Kart Wii runs at full speed at 720p, so let's up it to 1080p. And nope, 1080p is the no-go zone. Overall emulation sees a nice improvement, but not quite at 1080p levels just yet. Idle Power Draw is on the upper end against the budgets, and Max Power Draw is a new high at 44 watts. Sure, it's less than the mid-range, but they also have more performance. The B-Link EQ12 Pro managed to keep the Intel N305 CPU under 90C, which is decent considering the extra power draw. It does this with a slight bump up in fan noise over the EQ12, but overall, it's not noisy. The included NVMe drive has no problem staying cool, which is not surprising with the extra fan and PCIe X1 speed limit. In the BIOS, there are all the same options available that were found on the EQ12. However, this time PL1 is set at 20 watts, so I put it higher to see if it made a difference. It didn't. Looks to be max performance for the N305 right out of the box. Okay, let's summarize. The B-Link EQ12 Pro is quiet, has a decent set of ports, and has NVMe cooling. However, the price, the price, the price. As we saw from the benchmark results, it's a really good budget CPU, but has a mid-range price. It's a weak mid-range CPU, and has a price to match. So it doesn't stack up in any chart. I wouldn't call it an i3 either, but Intel's branding these days is all over the place. Sure, the N305 beats the N100s by a lot, but the N100 minis are around $200 US. Is around a $150 US dollar premium for the performance worth it? I don't think so. The jump from an N95 to N100 is 20 US dollars, and then to the N305 it's 150? Yeah, no. And of course, the Minis Forum UM560, which I've reviewed, easily beats the N305 in performance and can be had for an extra $9. But if you're in the US, the newly released UM560 XT, which I haven't reviewed but features the Ryzen 5600H, can be had for under 300 US dollars. So there's a, uh, yeah, nothing I can say there when the N305 gets trounced by that CPU. The only benefit of the B-Link EQ12 Pro is the dual 2.5 gigabit LAN and AV1 decoding. And while I do like this mini PC, the price needs to drop for this one to have any chance of a recommendation. In the meantime, why not check out my Chewy Lockbox X review to see why it's my favorite budget mini PC. Cheers.